I'm Haley Taylor, and you're listening to The Rough Draft Diaries. This week on The Rough Draft Diaries, Crawford Strunk's connections have led us just across the street. About 50 feet from Prometica's Children's Hospital lies the Ronald McDonald House. My day so far has been a little busy as I get back here, there's no doubt about it. Not enjoying the cold, that's for sure. That's Chad Bringman, the CEO of our local chapter and this network of houses. So the Ronald McDonald House is a place for families to stay when they have sick children. So if someone is traveling to Toledo, in our case, uh, from wherever that might be, and uh, receiving medical care from any medical facility in Toledo, this is the place that families can stay so that they're uh, close to their child, they can be part of that treatment plan, they can be a support to their, their child. Uh, it's, it's just easier for them to access the medical care. Now, you may know the Ronald McDonald House from that pop tab collection container sitting in your staff kitchen at work. We've got one, too. And if you've contributed to that container, then you've contributed to the different programs the Ronald McDonald House offers. First, there's the actual Ronald McDonald House. It works almost like a hotel. There's private bedrooms. You can get home-cooked meals. It's a place to stay long term. Then there's the family rooms. There's a kitchen area, shower facility, a quiet room, a sleeping room. It's a nice place to catch a break. Then there's the mobile care unit where vehicles visit houses collecting blood samples or taking immunizations, giving health education, and much more. All these programs work together to help the millions of families with sick children find comfort and support. But the thing you may not know is that the Ronald McDonald House is not owned or operated by Ronald McDonald. The very first house actually opened in Philadelphia in 1974. Yeah, there was a football player who played for the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, that's why it was started in Philadelphia. Had a three-year-old daughter that was diagnosed with leukemia and found that they were sleeping in chairs, they were eating on a vending machines. Uh, just wasn't a real comfortable situation. And uh, basically, he and his teammates decided that they would support a house where families could stay. Uh, originally, it was called Eagles Fly for Leukemia. And eventually they realized that uh, two big things was, number one, this was bigger than the Philadelphia Eagles could take on, and they really needed some support. Obviously, one of the supporters that they went and uh, solicited was McDonald's. Uh, The local McDonald's in Philadelphia said, we have this new product coming out called a Shamrock Shake, and we'll give you the proceeds from that Shamrock Shake, but we want you to call it the Ronald McDonald House. So that's where the namesake came from. That's where the partnership came from. A lot of people think that we're owned and operated by McDonald's. That is not the case. They are a tremendous partner of ours. They are a tremendous donor in most cases, uh, but they're not. there's no obligation. Uh, they're a donor just like anybody else, and uh, obviously they're very good to us, and they've been good to us for a lot of years, but um, uh, we certainly are not owned and operated by McDonald's. It's a misconception that even I was under, and Chad admits that it has become an issue for the company in reaching out to the public for support. And it's not the only misconception Chad and his team wrestle with. Our only single funding source here for 35 years has been donations. Uh, and we really need the community to understand that, yes, McDonald's does help support us, and they're, they're a tremendous donor, uh, but we, they can't do it alone, right? So uh, we, we're very fortunate for the support that we have, but we do run into that misconception a lot that people think that McDonald's just takes care of everything here. That's absolutely false. And the second is that we only serve one children's hospital. We're, we're next door to uh, Toledo Children's Hospital, and they're a great partner of ours, and we do see a lot of families from there. Uh, but certainly we want families especially to understand that whether you're, uh, whether you're at Toledo Children's or you're at Mercy Children's or you're at uh, the University of Toledo Medical Center, wherever you might be, uh, that's what this Ronald McDonald House is all about, is if you're traveling to Toledo for medical care, this is the place that, that is here for you. Dealing with a misunderstanding in the branding of a company can prove fatal, especially when that company's lifeline to survive is a connection with the public. But Chad is also wary of pushing the issue to the other side of the coin, coming across as too forceful or too aggressive. It's a tricky balance to achieve, but at the end of the day, Chad believes the decision to support a charity is a simple one. Yeah, I think uh, you know one of the things that we talk about in in, in this side of the side of the fence, let's say, um, all the time is that you, we certainly don't want to be in people's face all the time. Um, we have a very good philosophy, in my opinion, um, here at the Ronald McDonald House that we want people to give because they feel compelled to give. Uh, we don't want to be something that's in people's face all the time. If we've had an impact on your life, or it's just something that resonates with you. Like for me, I never had a child, knock on wood, uh, that's had to use the uh, Ronald McDonald House or anything like that. 
but the mission resonates with me. And yeah, you could say it's because I work here, but I work here because it resonates with me. Uh, so we really want the community um, as a whole to, to feel compelled to, we want to support these families. We know that today is the worst day of their life, and we know they're going to be here for an extended period of time, and we don't want them to worry about those things. We want them to worry about getting their child better, getting their life back to as much normalcy as they possibly can, as quickly as they possibly can, so they don't need to worry about where they're going to stay, what are they going to have to eat, is there going to be anybody to talk to. Uh, those are all things that we want to take care of. And with that, we've almost wrapped up this episode of the Rough Draft Diaries. But first, you need to hear Chad's nominations for the next episode. You know, I would I would like to uh, recommend Michael Malone, uh, Tim Harrington, and then third, but certainly not least, is, is Mark Slates. You'll have to tune in next time to find out who I pick. For now, I'm Haley Taylor, and thanks for listening to the Rough Draft Diaries. Thank you.